Hey, what's up everyone? How's it going? This is Wad. Hope you guys are all doing well. Here for another camera review slash comparison for you guys. We're going to be taking a look at the brand new Canon 80D versus the Sony A6300. Now basically you have a traditional DSLR going against a mirrorless camera with 4K video capturing capabilities. And if you look at from the surface specifications, it looks like the Sony has a clear advantage. But we're actually going to see what the real difference is between these two in terms of actually actual video performance, low light capabilities, and everything regarding uh, shooting video specifically. Obviously both cameras are excellent in terms of stills capturing capabilities, but we're going to be specifically focusing on the video on both sides. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. Now both camera platforms have a completely different physical design. Obviously the Canon 80D is a traditional DSLR camera body which is excellent in terms of ergonomics, uh, great feeling in the hand. Uh, if you're used to shooting with a DSLR uh, it's definitely one that I would personally go over compared to the Sony which is certainly more compact but not as friendly in the hand and it's not as comfortable to use for long periods of time. That being said of course in terms of the sensor specification both are APS-C crop sensors and both have a 24 megapixel sensor in terms of resolution so they're actually very similar in terms of internal imaging capturing technology. Of course when you take a look at some other facets there are some other similarities such as the autofocusing system is both hybrid based. Now we have a lot more phase detection and contrast detection points on the A6300. The Canon has a 45 all cross type phase detection points which is definitely a very nice to use and the AF system is very fast very reliable in both camera platforms. Now in terms of the shutter speed the maximum speed on the Sony is rated for one four thousandth of a second versus you're looking at one eight thousandth of a second on the uh, Canon so a little bit better for really fast motion photography but in terms of maximum burst mode the A6300 is uh, faster at 11 frames per second versus 7 frames per second on the ADD. Now in terms of the display and viewfinders we find on both of these two cameras, you'll find that obviously we have an optical 100% coverage viewfinder on the ADD. I still love an optical viewfinder. I love seeing the real world through my eyes. Now the electronic viewfinder on the A6300 is fairly decent. It has 2.3 million dot resolution, so it's very clear and you can easily use it as your main display. The rear mounted display on the Sony is a 3 inches, the same size the Canon. It has a little bit of a tilt but I'm not a huge fan of this uh, overall articulation. It's fairly limited. You can actually flip it out like you can on the ADD which has a full flip out display and also the uh, resolution is slightly higher on the Canon and it definitely looks better in terms of color rendition and of course it is a touch screen unlike the display we find on the Sony. Now obviously one of the main features and one of the main benefits of uh, cameras like these is for shooting video and that's what this comparison is mainly about. Now in terms of video capturing capabilities, uh, certainly on paper the Sony looks to be a lot more capable since it can shoot 3840 by 2160 at 30 FPS or 24 FPS at 100 megabits per second versus on the Canon side you're limited to full HD 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second and that's at 90 uh, megabits per second. So the bitrate is pretty good on the Canon but the resolution is certainly not there and also in terms of slow motion capabilities the sony also has 120 frames per second mode in full hd versus the best that the add can do is at 60 frames per second in full hd mode now in terms of the audio capabilities we both have external mic connection as well as hdmi out for external monitoring and uh, both cameras have wi-fi capabilities on the plus side the add does have a headphone jack which is excellent if you want to monitor your audio live unfortunately we don't have that connection on the a6300. Now what we're going to do is finally get into our side-by-side -side video comparison. Now what we're going to uh, take a look at is obviously the difference between the best uh, video capturing capabilities on the a6300 side versus uh, the ADD's 1080p video capturing capabilities. But to keep things also fair, we're going to also shoot the uh, Sony at 1080p just to see the difference between the two in terms of that resolution. And we're going to get into some low light later on. So therefore, I'm going to be quiet and you guys can uh, see the difference for yourself.
Now to sum up everything we've talked about, we're gonna go through the advantages that both cameras present, starting with the new Canon 80D. Now in my opinion, I personally like the ergonomics of a traditional DSLR camera body. I think the uh, A6300 is uh, nice in terms of its compact size, but in terms of actual comfort and long-term use, especially for photos and handheld work, the 80D is better. Furthermore, I think the rear-mounted display on the ADD is superior. Uh, I definitely like the overall look. It looks a lot sharper, nicer color rendition, slightly overall higher uh, dot count, and also the uh, fully articulating flip-out touchscreen that so many people liked on the 70D. Another pro on the Canon side is that it has a 100% coverage optical viewfinder, which uh, traditional photographers can't live without. And even though the EVF on the Sony is excellent and very useful, some people still will prefer the real optical viewfinder. Furthermore, there's a lot of Canon shooters out there and chances are you have a couple of Canon lenses uh, with the Sony platform, although it's been around for a couple of years, the lenses are still progressing and the library isn't as vast and as unique as what we find on the Canon platform. And uh, certainly uh, both uh, later down the road will become even, but if you're already a Canon shooter and have all those lenses already invested, there's kind of a huge pain to uh, swapping out to a new camera platform. And the last advantage on the ADD side is it has a headphone jack, which uh, is crucial for monitoring your audio properly. Although uh, both cameras have on-screen levels for your audio, it's always nice to have a headphone jack for a real audio monitoring to see what the quality will be like. And unfortunately, a headphone jack is missing on the Sony side. Now the advantages on the A6300 are certainly more. Firstly, obviously you have a much sharper image, much more video capturing capabilities with the full 4K uh, compared to the 1080p. Uh, and even if you shoot at 1080p with the A6300, you'll notice a sharper image even at 1080p on the ADD. So in terms of all regards, uh, the uh, video capturing capability is definitely better on the Sony side. On top of that, at 1080p, you can shoot up to 120 frames per second, which is gonna allow you to do a little bit of slow motion stuff, versus on the ADD side, you're limited to 60 FPS. Furthermore, as you can see over here, the dynamic range on the Sony is much greater. It also captures at a higher bit rate, so you're gonna get a little bit more information on your highlights and shadows, thanks to the S-Log mode. Additionally, as you saw from our side-by-side -side comparison, the low-light performance on the A6300 is far superior than the ADD. Canon is really far behind of what Sony is doing with their internal processing, and the way that they reduce overall noise is very nice. You can shoot almost at uh, 25,000 uh, ISO without having too much noise, versus if you look at the image on the ADD, it's full of artifacts, and the sharpness and color rendition has been reduced significantly as well. And last but not least, one of the big advantages of a mirrorless camera is obviously the compact size, as we mentioned, but more importantly, you can now use things like focal reducers, well, which will allow you to basically increase the field of view and the amount of light that you're capturing through the sensors. So for example, if you put a lens turbo adapter like you see over here, you can go from an APS-C size sensor to something that looks like a full frame sensor, which is not only gonna improve your field of view, uh, give you more uh, luminosity, but also also will look sharper as well. It's pretty amazing to see what the adapter technology has uh, developed into, especially if you're on the mirrorless side versus on the Canon with the uh, pentaprism setup, you can't use any type of focal reducer. Really, other than that guys, that's really it. Give us a thumbs up if this video helped you out in any way. And uh, if you have any specific questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Check out the description for more detailed information. And if you wanna help us grow and help support the channel, uh, check out our B&H links, they actually sent out a uh, Sony A6300 for review. Without them, this video wouldn't be possible. So thanks again to them. Thanks again to you. And we'll see you later. Take care.